Welcome to this fifth class about direct policy search and reinforcement learning. This time we will compare the optimization spaces and the sample reuse capabilities of those two classes of methods. So first a reminder about the context. We are trying to figure out why deep reinforcement learning methods seem to be more sample efficient than direct policy search methods. In the previous lesson, we have seen two potential explanations and we have seen that they were wrong. And now we study those two remaining explanations. It might be the case that reinforcement learning searches in a better space because it uses information at each state action pair, whereas direct policy search methods consider the whole episode as a single sample. But we will see that this point is dependent on the environment. And the second point might be that reinforcement learning method can reuse more samples than direct policy search method, again, because they use separate state action pairs. And we will see that this is the key explanation particularly when the reinforcement learning method is of policy. So let's first start with the first question, does deep reinforcement learning search in a better space? So if you remember the third lesson of this playlist, I have explained with some details how policy gradient works, and I have shown you that it performs updates from each state action pair, and that it sums these updates, which corresponds to moving the theta parameter of the neural network in the performance landscape. So the question is, where does search take place? Search comes from the exploration part. In direct policy search, you explore directly in the space of policy parameters. You sample different policy parameters, so you move directly in this landscape. Whereas I have just explained to you that in the policy guardian case, we change actions in states, and this will result in changing the theta parameter. So exploration takes place in general in the state action space. So the policy gradient will define the change in action probabilities in the state action space. And then this change will be implemented without any search in the policy parameter space. So we can say that the policy gradient method search in the state action space, which might be faster than searching the theta space because the theta space is generally much larger than the state action space. So this may be a key reason for the advantage. Actually, reinforcement learning research is more and more considering robots or complicated agents that learn from images in difficult environments. And it is in no way obvious anymore that the state action space or the observation action space is smaller than the space of policy parameters. So this argument is okay for small enough reinforcement learning problems, but might be wrong for more complicated reinforcement learning problems. Another point that suggests that this argument might be wrong is related to what is called policy perturbation. As I just said, most deep reinforcement learning algorithms explore in the state action space. They just add noise to actions. But there are a few methods which add noise directly to policy parameters. In particular, there are these two papers that were published the same year in the same conference, if I remember correctly. And those two papers have shown that putting noise in the policy parameter space results in better performance than putting noise in the action space. We call this policy perturbation, and we call this action perturbation. And if you think of it closely, using policy parameter noise is closer to direct policy search because you explore directly in the policy parameter space. So it may perform better, but the point is that better performance does not necessarily imply higher sample efficiency. So it may not be an explanation of the better sample efficiency of direct policy search methods. So it is not clear that playing with policy parameter noise results in higher sample efficiency than playing with action noise. And actually, this cannot explain why direct policy search is less sample efficient than policy gradient methods. So we need to better investigate this difference in sample efficiency of policy parameter noise compared to action noise. And it would be a good idea to write a paper about this. Let's now move to the second question, which is the following. Can reinforcement learning reuse samples better than direct policy search? When I first considered this question, 
I thought that in direct policy search, you could not reuse any sample at all because you have this policy. You need to evaluate this particular policy and evaluating one policy has nothing to do with evaluating another policy. So you cannot reuse the samples corresponding to one policy to evaluate another policy. But actually, this point is slightly wrong. In fact, in evolution theory strategies, these authors have shown that with a technique called importance mixing, you can reuse some of the policies of a previous population to evaluate a next population, provided that the Gaussians from which you sampled both populations are overlapping. If you have this first population that you have already sampled and then you sample from a second population which is here, the samples that are at the intersection between both populations can be reused for evaluating that particular population and it saves a lot of samples because it means reusing policies that you have already evaluated. So we can state the whole idea more shortly by just saying that to build a new generation, you can reuse samples from the previous generation, actually the samples that lie at the intersection between the two populations. And in the importance mixing paper, the authors show that you can gain 90% in sample efficiency when the two populations overlap a lot, which is often the case. By the way, when I explained this, I forgot to mention this important aspect, which is that in direct policy search, a sample is a pair policy parameters and performance of these policy parameters. So there is no idea of recombining several pieces of trajectories because there is no idea of a piece of a trajectory. You just have a general performance. The trajectory is not even mentioned in the samples that you consider that will make a huge difference with respect to policy gradient methods. In this paper with colleagues, we investigated whether we could extend the importance mixing ID to several generations. So if you have the first population and you already have the samples, then you can reuse those samples for the second population, but you can still reuse those samples for the third population, which comes later. And we found that in fact, doing this does not provide a significant gain because in general, the next populations will overlap fewer than the second population with respect to the first population. Now let's move to sample reuse in policy gradient method. I have to remind you two concepts that come from my playlist about policy search method. The concept of being of policy and the concept of using a replay buffer. I have shown in this playlist about policy search methods that being of policy is a matter of degree because policies should not evolve too quickly. You can consider a trust region mechanism to avoid that the policy moves far away from the previous policies. And I have shown that of policy reinforcement learning algorithm can use a replay buffer. When they do so, they keep data from older policies or expert policies and train again from this older data. And actually, this is the point that drastically improves sample efficiency. If you can reuse the same data from previous trajectories again and again, you will compute your gradient with much fewer samples and this will improve a lot your sample efficiency. But the counterpart of this is that using a replay buffer will make your algorithm unstable because you may use samples that are too far away from your trust region. So the general message is that off policy methods are more sample efficient than direct policy search methods, but they are more unstable. So to summarize all the points from these five videos, Direct policy search methods are robust, they are derivative free, they are better over longer horizons, but they are poor at sample reuse, they have a low sample efficiency, and you need to evaluate many potentially poor policies, which is rather frustrating. By contrast, with policy gradient method, you can use an analytical derivative of the policy function. You can use information from each step not just from trajectories. And when you are off policy, you can use a replay buffer, which improves a lot the sample efficiency of the approach. And this closes this list of lessons. Thank you for listening.